Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Happy Valentine's Day a little early. I just wanted to share these cute little cards that I made for my kids and show you how to make them too. And of course you could do this for other holidays or birthday parties um, or whatnot. I thought the idea was really cute and it's really easy to do. Um, and it would make a nice uh, classroom Valentine as well. And you could even do this um, for next year or do it ahead of time, like a couple of weeks. So you're not like completely scrambling to get this done. Uh, I'm using this stamp set called Yummy in My Tummy. It's a Stampin' Up stamp set. So you can get it from stampinup.com. I'll put links in the video description to my demonstrator's website. But if you have a demonstrator, just call her up or him up and they can set you up. And then this set here, which I use for my little banners, this is actually one of the free ones that you get with Celebration when you spend $50. Um, it's one of the ones you can choose from, and that's going on to the end of March, I believe. So plenty of time, if you like this, to be able to grab that for free. And then when it's, once it's gone, it's gone. So I just wanted to let you know. Um, so the first thing I did was, as soon as I saw this stamp set, I thought, I wonder if the treat cups that they sold a couple years ago. I think they still have them, but if not, you might have some in your stash. I wonder if they fit. And yes, it's just about perfect to fit that. And if you don't remember that set, I've used it so much. It's a, like a gumball machine, and, or it can be a, like a sunflower or a baby rattle. Um, and you and it's got a big opening where you can put a treat cup. So it's really a fun and versatile set that I've used a lot. And they also had one with a heart, uh, which was a Valentine's set that I've used tons of times as well. So I was really excited to see that that fit. And that's what these look like here. And what I did was I looked at my circle dies. Uh, you might have a punch that this, that's this size, but I don't have very many punches. But um, if you have an inch and a inch and three quarter inch punch, it'll work. Or if you have a die, and this is from Lifestyle Crafts, this set of dies here, um, you might have it. But it's the one and three quarter inch size, or about four and a half centimeters if you are a centimeter person. Um, so I already cut that out just so that it would save a little time. And I just kind of eyeballed it. I cut it like a little lower than center because the, uh, the little monster's legs are shorter than its arms and then I'd have some room up top for my sentiment. And this is just regular old cardstock. I didn't even bother to, because actually I was planning on doing Copic markers, but then I'm like, you know what? I could do this so much quicker with watercolors and, uh, and it'll be really easy. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is ink this up, ink up my little monster here with the tummy. Um, up with black ink and if you can't find these these treat cups you could always put like uh, put this on make this on like a little uh, lunch sack or, or a little baggie or if you have a cute little die cut bag you could stamp that on there and just punch out the circle and put candies in a baggie and pop it in there and then they could see the candies through because actually that's probably a better idea because you can't fit many candies in that little um that little treat pouch to be honest so what i'm going to do is just kind of eyeball it i just want to make sure that i'm stamping so that center is right around where I've punched or where I've die cut. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's a day before Valentine's Day. You know, perfection flew out the window two weeks ago. You should have had your act together. If, you're, if you want perfect Valentine's, you can't be doing that the night before. But let me tell you. All right, not too shabby. Look at that, actually. That was probably my best one yet. And um, while I'm at it, while I've got my ink out, I want to do my little banner. And I so I did three different ones. And the one I like the best was this one here uh, because I just kind of um, stamped some hearts hanging from there. This one I just freehand wrote Happy Valentine's Day, but I don't have very good handwriting, so I wasn't that thrilled with that one. Um, and then this one I used one of the other little banner ones, but I didn't think it looked that great with black ink, and I didn't want to get out another ink pad. I really wanted to make this limited supplies, so I'm just using the little curvy string here. And this is archival ink, so I can watercolor over it and it's not going to smear. I'm going to do one kind of centered up. And if you have any banner stamps or even lace stamps or anything like that, I think that would be really cute. Or you could just draw it with a pen. You know, you don't have to have these stamps. Use whatever, use what you have. Okay. And I'm going to stamp for you, or you could freehand if you have good handwriting. That would, then you could put Happy Valentine's Day or whatever you want. There we go. And um, I am going to, you could use an ink pad to stamp the heart, but I'm actually gonna wait and I'm gonna stamp it with my watercolors afterwards. Uh, so now I'm gonna do some painting and I'm just gonna use my little uh, pre, not prima, my little Jane Davenport watercolors cause I have them right here open on my desk. So that makes sense. And I know I'm gonna want some of that warm yellow cause everything in her brights palette is very cool. So I know I want some warm yellow. So I'm just bringing some of that over onto this, uh, onto this palette here so everything will have a little bit more depth of color. And then I'm gonna start off by painting the monster's body. And I'm gonna do that with this uh, kind of um, frosted blue color. 
and I'm using regular cardstock. The thing that's kind of nice, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Hello, there we are. Um, the thing that's kind of nice about these less expensive watercolors um, is that I find that they work a lot better. They're more, more like an Eastern watercolor and they work a lot better on unsized paper or lightly sized paper like cardstock. So you don't have to have, like if I was gonna do this with um, a more expensive artist grade watercolors, I find that I get it gets very streaky if you're using cheap paper or cardstock because um, the colors are so saturated that they just kind of grab the paper and you can't blend them. But with Eastern watercolors or these uh, like Jane Davenport watercolors, uh, I think some of the extenders in them help them remain blendable a little bit longer. So I'm adding a little bit of this kind of phthalo -y blue color. And I'm, I apologize, I don't know her names right off the top of my head. I think the light one was 70s eyeshadow. I can't remember what this one's called, but I can kind of go in and quickly throw that color down, then kind of wipe off the excess, then just kind of spread it out a little bit so I get that little bit of shadow. And it's just a lot quicker for me to do this this way than with markers, but you could totally use markers if that's your preference. The thing is, you, you could take this idea and use the stamps that you have, use the supplies that you have, and, and go with it, you know? it's I'm, We're in the middle of a snowstorm. You're probably in the middle of a snowstorm too if you're home watching this today. You know, don't risk your life going out to the store. Use, look around your stash, use what you have. Let's be sensible. So one thing I like to do is make my own greens. So if I take that yellow, that bright um, warm yellow from the neutrals palette and I add it with this um, really bright kind of phthalo green from the brights palette, I get a very beautiful green. Cause that green on its own is extremely vivid. It's almost a little bit garish. Um, it's like a phthalo green. And I just really love it when I mix it with a warm yellow. Also with like an orange, it looks pretty with an orange too. So that's something else that you might want to try. The colors in the Jane Davenport Bright Color Bright Palette are all very cool based. So uh, sometimes it can make them feel a little um, shallow. You kind of need a little richness to them. And by grabbing some of the warmer colors from the neutral palette, I find achieves that really well. So if you've got those colors, there's a little tip for you. So now I'm taking some of this uh, bright, bright pink. It's kind of like an opera rose here. I'll scooch out over a little bit so you can see it. It's super, super neon. This is a card. I'm not worried about it fading. Uh, and I'm just gonna very quickly throw it in there. And you can see that I'm not, it's not getting too streaky because I, I think it has to do with like the uh, the extenders or fillers in this paint that kind of keep it blendable on cardstock. So, uh, so it's actually really nice if you like to do cards or you like to do mixed media in an art journal where you might not be using really well sized paper. I feel like, and I mentioned it in my recent video, Art versus Craft Supplies. Um, that you know you gotta match the tool to the job using you know seven dollar sheet paper for a card front you know it's probably you know when you're just gonna stamp and color something in and you're not gonna be scrubbing and you're not gonna be like abusing that paper it's kind of overkill when like a you know 50 cent sheet of paper would do the same would, would look the same essentially when you're all done you know then again trying to do a like complex painting on a cheap piece of paper is not going to work as well because you know it's going to pill up when you try to scrub or scrub or do any you know serious techniques on it but it's going to be just fine um for stamping and coloring in something with one layer um and if you did want to add more depth to this after it dries you can always go in with some um colored pencils and build depth that way which would be really pretty maybe we'll do this i'm not sure okay i'm going to blot that off i'm going to go in with this green on its own now and the paper is not completely dry but the thing i find with um, when working on like a cardstock versus a watercolor paper is that the colors will retain their lines a little bit better. So it doesn't have to be completely dry. I just think it's because it doesn't have all that sizing in it that helps the colors blend. But that's just my, uh, that's my theory anyway. But a lot of these colors, these more ones that feel a little bit more like Eastern colors, they're meant to be used on like a rice paper or, or an unsized paper. So you know, they, they work very well for this type of technique. Now it's not completely dry, but I am going to do the stamping with the hearts. And this is just a rubber heart rubber stamp. And I'm going to switch brushes because this brush right here is really soft and absorbent and I'm, it's going to put too much water on that stamp and I'm not going to be able to stamp very well. So I'm just going over to a, just a synthetic, a regular synthetic brush. 
that's a little stiffer, more of like an acrylic painter brush, and I'm just putting this paint on kind of thickly. If the if the paint is beading up, you have too much water on there. And then I'm just gonna go in, and I'm not gonna be perfect. I could I'm I'm gonna trim end up trimming the rubber a little closer because uh, it's gonna be a little tougher to line up. And I can get a couple stamps, and then I gotta reload more paint. I did two over there. Maybe I'll do three over here. It doesn't have to be uh, symmetrical. In fact, I think it looks better when it's not symmetrical because your brain wants to match things up and then, um, and you can kind of get stuck in that little loop of matchy-matchy. There we go. Now something else is kind of fun. I had done those hearts as kind of clouds on one of the cards here, but then I thought I really liked just kind of freehanding some clouds like on top of what I've already done. So I'm just going to add a little water to this. Uh, this pink on my palette, if you can see, I just I just like to mix this stuff out. I zoomed in a little too close. I just have it kind of watery in there. I'm just going to do some little freehand hearts. And this is also, and I'm just, I'm just like making one line and making a line next to it, but since I'm using a filbert, which is like a rounded flat brush, um, I get some really cool, oops, I got a piece of tape stick in there. That's weird. I need to clean my desk. But I could put all these little kind of watery freehand hearts, and I just think it looks really fun. So I'm going to hit this really quick with a heat gun, and then, you know what, I'm going to show you just doing a little shading with a colored pencil, because, you know, we've got time, I think it's kind of fun. Of course, if you are doing a huge group of, the, group of these for a class, you want to cut out those extra steps. I wouldn't bother with a colored pencil for that, but if you're just making a few for your own children, then, um, then why not? It doesn't really take that much time if you're just doing a couple. It would add on some time if you're doing like 20 or 30 of them. But uh, just for a couple, it's not that big of a deal. You do definitely want this dry, though, before you attempt the colored pencil because it will um, it will tear your paper if you don't. And uh, these are, like, you can use any colored pencils, really. These are Prismacolors. I happen to really like Prismacolors uh, because I've been using them a long time. They, they do get a little frustrating when they break. Um, and most of my Prismacolors are older, so um, I have had... People complain recently that the newer Prismacolors uh, that are not made in the United States break, but I've also just recently heard that someone just recently ordered some on Amazon and they were fine. So I think the big thing is, you know, if you have them, don't drop them. Store them somewhere where they're not going to get knocked over. And uh, if you get them, try them out right away. And if you see they're breaking all over the place because you just ordered them online, send them back. You know, they probably got mistreated when they were shipped to you there just a little bit you know just that little bit I think of um, of shading adds quite a bit you could also put in some more grasses if you want I've got this like crazy Jenga pile over here. if you could see my desk you'd be appalled I have, like this Jenga pile next to me of like um, <laughs> of books and adhesive guns and heat guns just all stacked on top of my box of colored pencils <laughs> it's a fire hazard I'm telling you I'm gonna attend to that right after this video I think I put in a few more blades of grass. You don't have to do that. I just thought it was kind of fun. Okay, oh, I decided I wanted to try a different color for the background. So these are like uh, these cheapo card bases from Michaels. I don't know if you remember, about a year ago, um, I was down in Michaels and it's, it's always quite an, quite an adventure to go down because I have to, the closest one is like an hour and a half away. So when I, when I go to Michaels, I mean business. And um, they had all these huge like bulk packs of cards on sale and there were like 60 card bases in a box for uh, five on sale for five dollars and I think I bought one of every kind they had and I mean I was pawning off blind card bases to any friends of mine that made cards I was like I had so many until I pared it down enough to that it would all fit on one shelf in my office and um and I'm still plugging away at those I'm, I'm down to like a quarter of a shelf though so uh, so I have made like a huge dent and I do sell cards so um you know, so it worked out all right, but but yeah, that was a little crazy. Before I stick this down, though, I shouldn't have put my adhesive on before I did this, so don't put your adhesive on yet if you're here. I'm just going to try not to stick it down while I do this. I need to uh, trace that circle on the inside of my card. I've lost my pencil, so I'm just going to use a colored pencil. I'll just use this one because it will somewhat match. Okay, hopefully that's not permanent yet. <laughs> Don't put your adhesive on yet. Okay, then I'm gonna take my little treat cup and I'm gonna put some M&Ms or whatever candy you like in there. I love the smell of M&Ms. 
Um, it just like transports me right back to childhood. I don't eat M&Ms, but uh, oh my gosh, that smell, that Hershey chocolate smell. Is there anything better than the smell of a Hershey chocolate? The smell of a Twinkie. Oh my gosh, Twinkies smell amazing. And so what I'm gonna do is actually see if I've got it too full. I have it maybe a smidgen too full. You want it quite full though, because you don't want it to stick down before you're ready. So I just took an M&M &M out. And I'm gonna peel off the little stick on here. And then what I do here is actually hold, flip this over and hold it up above me. And then I just kind of, um, I kind of figure out where, I just kind of line it up just like holding it over me. And then I can just kind of balance on the M&Ms and get it lined up perfectly. So the um, pencil line I did is right on the inside edge. You probably, you might be able to see the pencil line there. Maybe if I hold it just right. Uh, I don't know. It's right underneath where the kind of plastic moves up. Um, I line that up good and then I press it down. If you have this tree cup really full, then, um, then it's going to, um, it's going to keep it from sticking down till you are ready to really push it down. Now I'm going to take this, which I've already applied adhesive to. You should be putting adhesive on right now. And I am going to put that right there and try to, whoops, I didn't line up that, that great. Try to line it up so I have it, I have an even border. I cut this paper before I stamped on it to four inches by five and a quarter. So I'd have a little bit of a frame. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to be too concerned with it being perfect. Now, if you want to, like, go in with, like, a Winga Stella pen, that would be pretty, wouldn't it? Let's try that. I haven't used this in a while, so I'm hoping it's ready to go. Um, you could go in, and you could add little bits of... Oh, yeah, it's ready to go. You can add little bits of sparkle here. That's kind of fun. You will want to scribble this off on, like, a, another um, project or on just, like, a scrap of paper because you will get a little residue in there but that just gives you a little bit of a I don't know if you can see it a little bit of a sparkle there um but there you go it's a very quick and easy valentine you can make this is the one I like the best I think because I like the I really like the yellow border there I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see that oh we're zooming in there we go um so I just thought that was really cute and uh then of course the kids will destroy the card as they're getting the candy but I did come up with a way to do this without having the card destroyable and what I do is um I make a I punch a hole in the card base as well and I make a um I let's see what did I do there when I made these so that they wouldn't be destroyed I punched a hole in the card base and then I made like um, a second piece of paper that on runners that I could slide out so that the candy could just drop out of there. Uh, I've done that before. I usually don't. I usually just do it like this. Or you can even stick the treat cup on top because it is clear but I think it looks a little bit nicer when you have it coming in from the back. Uh, but in, what, in any event, they will be enjoyed. They will be appreciated. And, um, and also I think it's a little freeing if you know the card probably isn't going to be kept and it's going to be destroyed and the candy's going to go out. You don't have to worry about spending an hour on it. Have fun. Enjoy it. It's a thought that counts, and I think your kids will really appreciate this, uh, or anybody, any friend. Uh, so I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. I'll put links to these products in the video description that go to my friend Wendy's website. But, if, of course, if you have your own Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please give them a call. And, um... Yeah, all these stamps are current. I'm pretty sure the treat cups are still available, but if not, you know, punch a hole, put your candies in a baggie, and pop it behind the hole, and I think it'd still be just adorable, especially on a little die-cut treat bag or something. Thank you very much for watching. Happy Valentine's Day. Until next time, happy crafting.